Hello everyone and welcome to the GATE Computer Science course. So this video is for the students who have enrolled for the GATE Computer Science and this will be a total of four part video. In this first video, we are going to discuss about the basic information regarding the GATE exam. We will try to answer what is the GATE exam, what is the exam pattern, what is the cutoff scoring system in the GATE exam and what will be the benefit of giving the GATE exam. And then we are going to have the second and third part and fourth part. So as I said, this is a four part video. So this is just the first part of this entire session. So let's start here. What is GATE? So GATE stands for Graduate Aptitude Test in Engineering. So this GATE exam is for the candidates who have completed their BTEC. And now you're planning to, to get some government job or some public sector undertakings in technical discipline. So this GATE examination is conducted by the total eight institutions jointly, which include IIT Bangalore, IIT Delhi, IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, IIT Guwahati, IIT Khadakpur. So all of these institutions are a part of uh, the GATE organizing committee and they organize the GATE exam on, the, on behalf of MHRD, that is Ministry of Human Resource Development. So this exam is designed to test how good engineer are you? Do you have good fundamental knowledge of engineering discipline? Kya aapke paas engineering discipline ki ek fundamental knowledge hai ya nahi hai? This is what this exam is actually testing. Now, so these are the institutions who have organized this exam in various years. So as you can see, IC Bangalore organized this exam in 1994, 1990, 1996, uh, 2002, 2008 and so on. So this is telling which organizing institutions have uh, organized this exam in the past years. Now what is the qualifying degree for GATE? Qualifying degree kya hai? Obviously some of you are having the questions, am I eligible to prepare for GATE? Kya main GATE exam ke liye prepare, eligible hu? So this is what we are trying to answer. So here if you have done B.Tech or B.E. or B.Pharma, so basically all of these are four year degree, then you're directly eligible to apply for GATE examination. Secondly, if you have done architecture, there is B.Arc or you have done your B.Sc. research or you have done MBBS or B.Pharma or for all of these people who have these degrees, they are eligible to apply for GATE examination. Here, this PPT presentation is also embedded in the comment section of this video. So if you want to have a complete look at this presentation, you can also download this presentation from the comment section of this video. For GATE Computer Science, the GATE exam is approximately of 3 hours. And the total marks in the question paper is 100. So in those 100 marks, first 15% or you can say 15 marks is reserved for aptitude and reasoning. And the rest 85% or 85 marks is reserved for your technical discipline. So as you can see, the weightage of technical discipline is much higher as compared to the weightage of non-technical discipline. So here in these 85 marks, so total number of questions in the question paper will be 65. So in these 65 questions, uh, you are going to have 10 questions from aptitude and reasoning and rest of the 55 questions are from technical section and these 55 questions are further divided into two sections that is one mark question so you will be having a total of 25 questions which are of one marks and rest 30 questions are of two marks and the total cutoff marks for gate varies from 25 to 28.5 so this is the cutoff marks in the various years so in 2020 because right now this 2020 examination just concluded and you are preparing for gate 2021 or gate 2022. So in 2020 the cutoff marks for general category is 28.5 for OBC it is 25.6 and for SCST is 19 and these marks are out of 100. That means if you score more than 28.5 marks then you will be called as a GATE qualified candidate. In the same way, in 2019, the cutoff for general category was 29.5. For OBC category, it was 26.6. For SCST and PWD candidates, it was 19.7. In 2008, 
for general category the cutoff was 25 for obc category the cutoff was 22.5 and for scst and pwd candidates it is 60 16.60 but just qualifying this gate exam is not enough so this these are the cutoff marks just to tell you that you are gate qualified and trust me approximately 16 to 17 percent people only uh, able to uh, qualify this cutoff out of all the people who are applying for gate computer science approximately 1 lakh students or 1 lakh candidates apply for gate computer science out of those 1 lakhs only 16 percent 1 6 16 percent people qualify these cutoffs so you can see the examination is quite difficult now there are two things here one is the gate cutoff and second one is gate admission cutoff these two things are very very different because when you give your gate examination on the basis of marks you have scored the gate committee is going to assign you some ranks and on the basis of ranks you are going to apply in various colleges and IITs and these IITs and colleges will be allocated to you on the basis of your rank so here you can see what is the gate qualifying cutoff so gate qualifying cutoff is the minimum marks that is required to qualify the gate exam but having qualified this minimum marks is not a guarantee that you will get admission in IIT because approximately 15,000 candidates will be qualifying the gate cutoff but only top 1,000 candidates will be getting uh, enrollment in IITs so your target is to come into those top 1,000 aapka jo target hai wo top 1,000 mein aane ka hai taaki aap old IITs ya fir NITs ke andar admissions le sake so here it is the when I say get admission cutoff so that means it is the minimum marks required to get admission in an institution kisi bhi institution mein admission lene ke liye jo minimum marks required hai usko hum bolte hain get admission cutoff and this is declared by again the same body but here this gate cutoff is declared by your uh, qualifying uh, your organizing institution but this admission cutoff is declared by the institution in which you are taking the admission for example if you are applying in IIT Guwahati so you are going to have a cutoff for IIT Guwahati so cutoff for most of the institutions they vary accordingly so the cutoff is very different next parameters to decide the cutoff on what basis the this cutoff is decided so as i said the cutoff is decided on the basis of the number of candidates who are applying for the gate exam secondly uh, the number of candidates who have scored particular uh, i mean who have cleared the cutoff marks and third what is the level of examination what is the level of question paper was it easy was it difficult so basically your gate qualifying cutoff is dependent on candidates performance category of candidates and the previous year cutoff tracks but this admission cutoff is dependent on the number of seats kitni seats a kisi bhi institution mein and number of application received in that particular institution what are the factors determining the gate cutoff? Kis kis factor per gate cutoff determine hoti hai? Number one is the total number of ad candidates who are taking the paper. So in 2013, approximately 2.5 lakh candidates appeared for gate computer science. But in 2019 and 2020, approximately only 1 lakh candidate appeared for gate examination. So it depends what is the total number of uh, candidates who are taking the paper or total number of candidates who are applying for the examination and secondly it is also dependent on the difficulty level of the gate question paper how difficult the exam is exam kitna difficult aya hai uske basis par bhi ye dependent hota hai third what is the number of seats which are available if you are applying in uh, certain IIT for example IIT Bombay is having the maximum number of seats which is approximately 120 to 180 for a computer science gate candidate so it also dependent on the total number of seats available so all the IITs all the NITs they declare what is the number of seats available in their institution on the basis of that again this cutoff marks will be decided and last the category under which the candidate is seeking admission so is a candidate seeking admission in general category is a candidate seeking admission in SCST category or OBC category so according to the category so these cutoff marks will also be decided 
then this is the gate cut uh, gate marks scored versus the ranks so if you are having gate marks between 30 to 40 then you are going to have a gate rank between 5000 to 10000 so this is depending on the year because uh, it also depends on the quality of question paper or the level of question paper so if the question paper will be difficult then by scoring less marks you are going to get better rank but if the question paper is easy then by scoring more marks you are going to have less rank right so here you can clearly see so this is from the previous year trends so we have seen the trends from the last six to seven years so this is from the previous year trends so we are trying to uh, we analyzed the rank that you'll get on the basis of the marks you are having so for example if you are having a marks between 40 to 50 so most of the time your rank is between 2000 to 5000 if your marks is between 68 to 72 so your rank will be top 100 to 200 or this these marks are out of 100 if your marks is above 75 that means you will be in top 50 ranks so it's called that you are top 50 ranks per hunger. So our aim here in these classes, our aim is to target these top 100 ranks. So as I said, gate 2020 exam just concluded. So this is the rank of the first. I mean, this is, these are the marks of the first 10 rankers of gate 2020. So in gate 2020, if you scored 84.67 marks out of 100, then your rank was 9. If you score 88.67 marks out of 100, then your rank was 1. So you can clearly see how much marks you have to score to get into top 10 ranks. So this is the kind of idea that you can get that what is the rank you have to get to get into these institutions. So for example, if you want to get into IC Bangalore direct admission, so your rank should be less than 100 or India rank should be less than 100 and if you want to get admission into IIT Bombay then uh, depends on the courses also because I, IIT Bombay have different courses IIT Bombay give a TA course that is teaching assistant uh, MTech with TA then IIT Bombay is also having MTech with RA that is research assistant and it is also having different different courses right so on the basis of the course that you are getting so your rank should be less than 600 to get into IIT Bombay. After this, for IIT Delhi, IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras, your rank should be less than 300. But to get a direct admission in any of these IITs, your rank should be less than 100. But in the same way, <coughs> for some courses, because they also have different courses, they also have courses for uh, TA, they also have courses for RA, as well as they also have courses for MS programs. So depending on what courses you are choosing, your rank will be decided. And if you want to get into IIT Kharagpur, the rank should be less than 600. If you want to get into IIT Roorkee, Guwahati or Banaras Hindu University, that is IIT BHU, then your rank should be less than 1000. And to get into new IITs as well as NITs, your rank should be less than 1500. For government state level colleges, national or state level colleges, so again, as I said, there are two categories of colleges here. One is the central universities, which are owned by the central government. And second is the state universities, which are owned by the state government. To get a college in the central university or state university, you should have a gate rank, which is less than or equal to 2500. And for any private college or any state level colleges, uh, the rank should be less greater than 2500. So you can see what college you want to get and according to that you can target your college so most of the time it is, it is only beneficial to give gate examination if you are getting a rank which is less than 1000 so if you have opportunities you will be opportunities you will be getting all of these top IITs so this is how your gate scorecard looks like so in your gate scorecard you will get a gate score and this gate score is decided as a relative marking scheme so for example, All India Rank 1, if he scored 88 marks and he's All India Rank 1, then he's going to get a gate score which is 1000. And on the basis of that, the gate score of other people will be evaluated. So for example, if he scored 88 marks and then All India Rank 2 scored 86 marks, but again because All India Rank 1 is 1000 uh, score, the score for All India Rank 1 is 1000. So the rank for all India rank 2 will be less than 1000 so approximately like 900 to 800 like this so we have two concepts here one concept is 
as you can see what is the total number of candidates who applied for the exam so this is actually for mechanical engineering as you can see so in computer science also you will get the similar kind of scorecard here we have the number of candidates who appeared for the exam what is the qualifying marks or cutoff for each of these categories just for example in mechanical discipline the qualifying marks for general category is 32.73 the qualifying marks for obc is 29.46 and the qualifying marks for scst is approximately 21.82 in the same way, what is the marks this candidate scored out of 100? So this candidate scored approximately 56.32 marks out of 100 and his rank, All India rank is 6491. So in this manner, you are going to get your GATE scorecard and on the basis of your score as well as on the basis of your rank, you are going to apply in various colleges or various IITs to get admissions over there. So this another concept here which is called as percentile. So calculating the percentile is very easy. So percentile is basically it denotes how many people were behind you. I mean to say let us assume that your gate rank was 1000 and number of candidates who applied is approximately 1 lakh. So percentile is calculated on the basis of how many candidates were behind you. So it is 1 minus all India rank divided by the number of candidates in that subject multiplied by 100 percent so this is basically how many candidates are behind you for example if my percentile is 99.5 so that means 99.5 percent people i've secured marks or i have secured a rank which is more than 99.5 percent people so i'm in top five percent people in uh, top 0.5 percent people in the entire domain right so this is how the percentile will be evaluated. Then stipend and tenure. So if you qualify the GATE computer science exam and you take admissions in any of the IITs or any of the colleges on the basis of your GATE rank and the institution should be AICT approved, then you will get a stipend which is 12,400 rupees per month. And this stipend is issued by MHRD. So most of the time it happens, like for example in my case it happens that my MTech fees was around 40,000 but the stipend I was getting is approximately 1.5 lakhs per year. So this stipend was given by MHRD so that you can do your masters and you can carry out your research and this is for two years. So because MTech is of two years, for these two years you are going to get stipend as 12,400 rupees every month from MHRD. And in other programs, like you have research assistants, which is RA. So in programs like RA, the stipend could be more as well as the duration of stipend can also be increased to three years. So this is uh, the sample data I've taken from IIT Bombay website. And this is the placement data of 2017 and 18. So in 2017 and 18, in IIT Bombay for MTech program, approximately four, 542 candidates registered for the placements and here approximately 489 candidates participated in the placements registered and participated means see all the people who are going to appear for mtech all of them are not going to really uh, apply for the placements why because some of the people are having plans to do phd some of the people are having plans to maybe go out of india and apply for phds in other countries and there are some some of them are interested in teaching so basically everyone who registers for the placement they does not really appear so in iit bombay in 2017-18 session so 542 people 542 candidates students who were doing mtech from there they registered for the placements and 489 participated in the placement examination and the 403 candidates got placed which is approximately 82.41 percent so your placement here 82.41 percent candidates here placement and what is uh, so this is again this is the placement percentage so for mtech the placement percentage was 82.41 and this is the department wise placement percentage because we are mostly concerned about the computer science department so if i talk about this computer science engineering mtech program in it bombay computer science engineering mtech program total 92 people participated and here out of them 98.91 percent people placed 
so this is something i've taken from iit bombay website because in mtech department they also have other courses we have mtech for electronics and communication we have mtech for mechanical so this is specifically for computer science discipline because the salary package in computer science discipline is very high as compared to any other branches as well as the placements for computer science is also very high so generally you have a opportunity to get 100 percent placement so this is 98.91 is very close to 100 percent only one candidate did not get placed. Maybe it is because the reason he wanted to go into some other uh, company or he wanted to do his PhD. That is why he could not get placed. Otherwise, most of the candidates get easily placed. Now, who am I? So, because all of you, because you have taken the course, obviously you are going to have this question. So, who am I? So my name is Himanshu and I have qualified gate examination approximately five to six times. I don't really remember now because I'm qualifying the gate exam since 2011. So I applied for gate exam in 2011, 12, 13, 14 and I qualified the gate exam every year. Now the best percentile I got is approximately 99 percentile. So actually it was around of 99 because I've secured more than 99 percentile. But again it is good better to secure to say that I have 99 percentile. And I have a total teaching experience of nine years. In out of these nine years, I've, uh, first three years I spent teaching to the college graduates, college students, MTech students. And from last six years, I'm training students from who are from Gate Computer Science discipline. And if you see any of the top brand institutions in Delhi, which is uh, in India actually, in India, which is from Gate Computer Science, so I've taken classes in almost all the top brand institutions in last five years you will see my name in almost every institution all over the country i've taken classes in approximately 10 states i take classes in bombay pune raipur chhattisgarh a lot of places in india where i take classes so it's been like five years so in those five years i've trained thousands and thousands of students i'm not sure really but i think it is more than 8000 plus students in the offline classroom coaching i trained them and I've got thousands of results in GATE exam. And you can search about my name on uh, YouTube also. So approximately I'm followed by two lakh plus students on YouTube. And uh, you can see that you are always here in a trusted hands right now. Okay. In this session, we are going to discuss about the syllabus for GATE computer science and the weightage of each and every subject in GATE computer science and how can you follow the video lectures? How can you start your preparation? So in your previous video, we had this introduction uh, part. We have covered the introduction part in the previous video. That is what is gate examination. Now in this video, we are having the complete discussion regarding the syllabus and the weightage of each and every subject. So as you can see uh, in the syllabus, we have two basic portions, two important portions in the gate computer science syllabus. The first portion is your general aptitude and reasoning. And second one is your computer science topics. So this general aptitude and reasoning, this is approximately of 15 marks or you can say 15, it contains a 15% of the entire gate computer science paper and the rest of your technical section is of 85 marks. So in this aptitude uh, part, we have two portions, one is verbal aptitude and second one is numerical aptitude. So verbal aptitude contains grammar, vocabulary, coding, decoding series, directions, blood relations, arrangements, syllogism, inter inference and assumptions, clock and puzzles. And the same way for numerical ability, we have fundamentals, equations, percentages, averages, ratio, proportional mixtures, allegations, data interpretation, data sufficiency, time, speed and distance, time and work, set theory and Venn diagrams, progressions, functions and graphs, logarithms, permutations and combinations, probability, geometry and mensuration. So this is general aptitude so generally the question paper the question that you get in general aptitude is very easy so even without any kind of preparation if you directly go in the examination still out of 15 you are able to score 10 plus marks 10 is other marks score karna general aptitude mein kafi easy hai because this portion is very easy in the gate examination then you have uh, engineering and discrete mathematics so in other branches like you have mechanical civil electronics and communication in those branches the mathematical portion is quite huge because they ask engineering mathematics a lot of topics are there in, in engineering mathematics in those uh, branches but here in computer science we do not really have a lot of topics in engineering mathematics only three topics are there which are linear algebra calculus and probability 
and rest of the topic here we are from we are having from discrete mathematics so this discrete mathematics is only in the computer science discipline this is not in other branches and again this discrete mathematics is core related to your computer science problems so a lot of problems which we study in discrete mathematics a lot of things that we are going to study in discrete mathematics for example graph theory it will be very very useful in other subjects in uh, algorithms you are going to study the applications of graph theory in algorithms when we have permutations and combinations here and these permutations and combinations are going to be very useful in each and every subject because there are some previous gate questions which are based on permutations and combination and that particular subject so obviously this is the kind of portion that you will never leave because this is the most important portion again in this entire portion is approximately of 15 marks ye 15 marks ka portion hai. it is a very huge weight so you can clearly see out of 100 marks you have 15 marks of aptitude 15 marks of mathematics so total this is 30 marks and rest 70 marks is your core technical area so in that 70 marks we have digital logic we have computer organization and architecture you have programming and data structures algorithms theory of computation in the same way we have compiler design operating system database management system and computer networks so what you can do is I, you can pause this video to check out the complete syllabus or you can download the pdf of this presentation from this video so uh, we have embedded the pdf of this presentation in the comment section of this video now this is the marks distribution from last three years so we have analyzed the question paper from 2017 2018 as well as 2019 so this is 2017 set 2 this is 2017 set 1 this is 2018 and this is 2019 so here you can clearly see that some of these subjects are extremely important for example here you have subject like aptitude and reasoning which is extremely important and both discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics they are also very very important so together discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics it comes for approximately 15 to 18 marks so here it is of 14 marks in uh, 2018 it was of 18 marks in 2017 it was of approximately 14 marks so this is also one of the portion that you should never leave a part of this some of these subjects are very important for example this operating system they are asking a lot of questions from operating system and theory of computation is very important and this computer networks is very important so some of these subjects are very very important or in other words you can say extremely important so to secure a good rank in gate exam when i'm saying good rank it means to get into top 1000 ranks to secure a good rank in gate exam you have to follow each of these subjects thoroughly you have to study each of these subjects thoroughly you cannot leave any subject in between aapko sabhi subject karne hai aap isme se koi bhi subject nahi chhod sakte why because if you will leave one or two subjects then there will be somebody else who is sitting in some other part of the country and he will be studying that subject remember it is not an examination which is on your college level this is an examination which is on the nation's level so you are not only going to compete with your classroom students you are not only going to compete the students which are in your college you are going to compete with everyone on the national level approximately 1 lakh plus candidates will be applying for the gate exam so you will be competing for with all of those 1 lakh plus candidates next is subject wise analysis and this is the average analysis of uh, last three years so from the last three years i can see that from aptitude and reasoning they have asked approximately 15 marks from uh, engineering mathematics plus discrete mathematics both of them together are approximately 15 marks one five then you have uh, some most important subjects here is operate uh, theory of computation from theory of computation they have asked approximately nine to ten marks theory of computation computer networks so again this computer networks is also uh, one of the lengthiest subject here so this is no such topic that you have to leave you cannot leave any topic here because uh, all of these topics are dependent on each other they are having some connection between each other now here there is something special that you will notice here there are some special things that you can see here you can notice you can notice that I have written these subjects in a group for example here we have C programming data structures and algorithm I have written them in a group we have digital logic covered architecture organization and operating system we have theory of computation and compiler design then you have discrete mathematics and engineering mathematics 
and then this is DBMS this is computer networks and this is reasoning so why I have written them in a group the thing is these subjects are very much interrelated to each other you cannot study data structure without studying C programming you cannot study algorithms without studying data structure so whenever you have to prepare whenever you are going to prepare these subjects you have to prepare these subjects together so operating system and computer architecture they are very much close to each other very much interlinked to each other in the same way this compiler design requires the basic of theory of computation so you cannot study compiler design without studying theory of computation so you, when you are preparing for exam you have to make sure you make sure that you in in you know in each of these groups you are not weak in one subject what do i mean to say by this is that if you are weak in data structures obviously your algorithm subject will suffer if you are weak in c programming obviously your data structures and algorithm both of them will suffer if you are weak in theory of computation then compiler design will suffer if you are weak in computer architecture then operating system will suffer and the questions that they are giving in the examination they are cross disciplinary that means some of these questions will be utilizing the concept of computer architecture as well as operating system so the questions will be like this is a complete combination of both of these topics and again so you cannot leave study one subject here and leave another so you have to study them together okay so what are the books that you can refer for discrete mathematics only one book is good which is Rosen Kenneth H Rosen so you should refer this book only see first first thing is the syllabus for gate examination is very lengthy so you cannot follow through the book entirely because uh, if you are going to follow through the book if you are going to pre prepare from the book it will take you approximately one whole year just to finish the syllabus the syllabus is very lengthy books can then aap agar spend karenge to bahut time aapko lagega and that you cannot afford to spend so it is always better that you should take some guidance some coaching somewhere or use some notes to understand what are the topics you have to study so here for discrete mathematics kenneth h rosen is the best book but for graph theory you can also refer deo then for engineering mathematics the book that you can refer is bs karewal Secondly, there's one more thing I want to suggest to you guys. Whenever, if you want to follow any textbook or reference book for the exam preparation, do not uh, refer any local author books. Try to refer standard author books. Because if you refer standard author books, then it, it, uh, it will be better. Because in local author books, sometimes they are presenting the concepts wrongly or sometimes they are having a lot of mistakes in the book. So it is always better. To prepare for any competitive exam, always try to follow the standard authors only. So here you can see for digital logic, the best book is Maurice Mano. But again, there's one more book I can recommend you that is A. Anand Kumar. A lot of topics are given in A. Anand Kumar. Now, if you want to take a book for programming data structures and algorithm together, then you can take the book Narsimha Karumanchi. And Narsimha Karumanchi did uh, MTech from IIT Bombay, qualified the GATE exam and he written the book for data structures and algorithm for GATE. It is also available on Amazon. This is one of the best book for data structures and algorithm. But if you want to refer any standard author book, then for programming you can refer Dennis Ritchie. For data structures you can refer Tenenbaum and for algorithms you can refer Corman. For theory of computation, you should refer Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch is a standard author book. But again, if you want to refer any local author book, then you can refer Puntam Baker or you can also refer Hopcroft as a standard author. So for computer networks, you can refer the book which is uh, Frozen. Frozen is the best book for computer networks, but you can also use Cross and Ross. Then for computer architecture, Carl Hamacher. Hamacher is the best book. Right. But again, you have other options also, like you have uh, options for Maurice Menno, you have options for Peterson, you have options for Ram Chandran. So, but I think Carl Hamacher will be the better book and best book for computer organization and architecture. For operating system, you should refer Galvin. Galvin is the only book which is good enough. But again, if for a few topics you want to refer other books, you can refer Tenenbaum and William Stallings. And for database management system, I believe Navathe is the better book but the problem is I personally feel that the language given is Navathe is not easy to understand so you can also refer Korth. Korth is a very easier book but again if you can refer Navathe that will be the best. 
for compiler design you can refer pullman this is the only book that we can refer you this is the only thing that you can do okay <clears throat> now how to study the subject in which order should i study so everybody gets this questions now order means because see subjects are dependent on each other for example you cannot study compiler design before studying theory of computation you cannot study operating system or you cannot study computer architecture without studying the concepts of digital logic you cannot study algorithms without studying the concepts of data structure so again it depends which order should you follow to prepare for the exam i would recommend you that initially start with discrete mathematics so any of these three orders you can follow any of them is uh, good so if you are not good with discrete mathematics then you should start with discrete mathematics but if you are good with discrete mathematics then you can follow this schedule also kyunki discrete mathematics mein the concepts of combinatrix permutations and combinations and probability those concepts will be used in each of these subject in every subject here the concepts of permutation combinations series and probability they will be used extensively so if you are weak in that portion obviously you are going to suffer in other topics so here uh, you can start with discrete mathematics then you can do digital logic c programming data structures algorithms theory of computation compiler design operating system then you can do computer architecture database management system computer networks engineering mathematics and aptitude and reasoning so here you can clearly see i've given this aptitude and reasoning the last one because within one week you can easily prepare for aptitude and reasoning for a gate exam now now if you feel that you do not want to start with discrete mathematics you can also start with theory of computation in that case do discrete mathematics as a second subject why is it because in digital logic also the concepts of permutations and combination they are going to be extensively used so here you can do c programming data structures algorithms compiler design operating system computer architecture database management system computer networks engineering mathematics aptitude and reasoning so in this order you can follow the subject so the order that we are going to follow here in this course is this one so we will be starting with digital logic then c programming data structures algorithm then i will be taking discrete mathematics in middle and then we are going to follow in this order so obviously the order is very important and why i have taken this order here because this order is the actual order in which you study these subjects in your btech to btech mein jis tarike se aap subject ko follow karte hain in your semesters for example you follow uh, in your first semester you study digital logic in your second semester you study c programming data structures in your third semester you study algorithms so the way you follow these subjects in semesters in btech the, the same way we are going to follow these subjects in the course and why we do that in this manner because each of these subjects are dependent on each other they are having very high dependencies so we have to respect the dependencies and we have to study these subjects according to that dependency only i hope this video was helpful for you and uh, we have covered lot of important things in this video and we are ready to start our course this video must have given you a clear picture of the syllabus of gate computer science in our next video we are going to discuss about how can you ask your doubt in what order you should in what uh, things you can follow before asking any doubt because what happens is most of the time uh, students ask the doubt which are repeated so instead of any asking any doubt which is already repeated by somebody else and already so given a solution for somebody else then how should you follow that how should you find the solution how should you answer that doubt so let us meet in the next video let us meet in the next session and let us start